I'm your host with the most loved 23. You're joining me for Elementalist Book 2, Chapter 5, The Source. You and Alice sit in Dean Swan's office, your stomach in knots as the woman who just fell from the sky stares you down. So, just to make sure I'm following so far, you're a source of blood magic. No, I am the source of all blood magic. You may call me Alma. The woman's gaze is impassive, and her voice is so cool, but forceful. So what? You're the most powerful blood ad of all time, or something? No, I'm not in a blood attuned. Their magic comes from me. She suddenly looks at Dean Swan, who stands against the wall, twisting her hands together anxiously. Your magic comes from me. Oh. Dean Swan's magic flares unbidden. You feel her energy permeate the room, but it's dwarfed by the massive signature emanating from Alma, thickening the air. I've never felt my magic as it's never reared against my command like that. It's it's as though it's drawn to you. Alma nods and looks at you. Your affinity for sun magic is born from of the sun source, Thea, and your affinity for moon magic. She nods at Atlas, her tone growing impatient. Of Gnome, the moon source. There are nine sources, each of us the origin of each one of the pure forms of magical energy that exists in this world. The least study that the theological origins of magic, but I always assumed the idea that magic came from the immortal beings was a myth. If I am a myth, then so is Cain, the air source, these foolish children freed. Has his propensity for utter chaos felt like a myth to you? So let me get this straight. Without you, there would be no magic. You're not human? Correct. I am neither man nor woman nor otherwise, but humans are unsettled by our true forms, incapable of comprehending what they see. A gaze suddenly bores into you and Atlas. Some of my pantheon, such as Cain, enjoy visiting this mortal plane, but some love it so much they never return. I'm speaking of that willful mother of yours. Oh, I'm sorry, wait, 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 hold on. Our mother? I thought, but she's dead. In some form or another, I am certain she lives. Sources, even when they take on a human form, are not so easily to dispatch. Well, then where is she? I have a thing or two I'd like to say to her, source or not. Your guess is as good as mine, but we haven't been able to locate Thea for the better part of 19 years. But if our mom's a source, that means Alice and I are... I did not come here to be interrogated by half-mortal children. I came here to fix a problem the two of you created. The force of her words shake the room, and a shiver of her rage runs down your spine before being replaced by your own fear. Your body tingles in the presence of Alma's unfathomable power. A few months ago, a massive surge of refractionary energy exploded over the Earth. I thought the energy signature was of your mother's. Wait, that was me and Alice. When you unleashed that energy, you caused a massive disturbance that broke Cain out of his prison, thousands of miles beneath the Earth. Hey, look, Atlas, we're powerful together, yay! I won't let you blame us for that. Unleashing that energy saved our lives. We weren't dealing with Rafe. Elmer runs a hand over her face wearily. Never mind. What's important is that your mother and Gnome were the only ones able to trap Cain in the first place, using refractionary energy. And refractionary energy is the only thing to be able to free him. But mere mortals like you should never have been able to wield it. Pardon me, but would you be talking about the Jester King from the popular children's fairy tale? You suddenly remember the old book of fairy tales F was reading in the library last year, while the rest of your friends were researching the shadow monsters. That book, chapter 6. Oh, the leprechaun people. Oh, uh, that... what's the story even about, anyway? According to the fairy tale, the Jester King was a mischievous imp who played silly pranks all over the world. 
until one of his pranks went too far and a prince and a princess trapped him in a dungeon forevermore. Every attuned kid knows him. Cain buried an entire civilization in ash in a fit of jealousy. He caused earthquakes, typhoons, tsunamis, not mere pranks. Before Pompeii, we didn't know what he was truly to be capable of, or how little he thought of our mortal charges. You're saying he destroyed Pompeii on a whim? That sounds like evil if I've ever heard of it. Evil, no. Power hungry and careless, absolutely. He can be charming, but make no mistake, Cain only cares for himself. Mmm. And why is he after our MC? He hated the way we sources value mortals. He thought of humans as playthings and was irate when we took his toys away, so to speak. Wait a second. What do you mean, playthings? Cain has never taken his duty as a protector of the world seriously. He finds humans simple and easily swayed, unworthy of protection. He has been the puppet master behind humans who called themselves conquerors, visionaries, heroes. But it was never enough for him. His rampage was catastrophic. If we hadn't stopped him, Pompeii would have marked the beginning of humanity's destruction. How did you stop him? With the help of the Earth Source, Thea and Gnome were able to trap him in an underground prison on Earth. Before he was sealed, he vowed he'd destroy the sources and gain dominion over the mortal world. As he feels it is his right to do. So why was he here at Pintergast instead of off terrorizing some other innocent civilization? He came to Pintergast because there is where your mother hid the sun crystal. He needs its power to stand a chance against the sources. The sun crystal that powers the sun at Rome. I have to go make sure. It is secure for now, but Cain has discovered its whereabouts. He will return and stronger. Only the sun and moon sources combined powers can imprison Cain. But we have no idea where Thea is, and without her, Gnome's energy is useless. He faces you and Alice, eyes narrowing shrewdly. But I have a hunch. It's a long shot, as you mortals say. But time is short, and so it may be our only shot. We cannot let Cain hunt down the sources and wreak havoc once more. I must train you two to defeat him. Do you seriously think me and Ezekiel can stand in for the sun and moon sources? The literal wells of all sun and moon magic? I tire of your quest- I tire of you giving Alice shit, he's my brother. You were able to unleash the refractionary energy, were you not? She holds her hands out towards you and her power fills a room, pressing against you and Alice. You feel your own magic react, rearing up to defend you against her immense might. Ah! Ugh. Alma drops her hands and her energy recedes, the light flaring off of you and Alice dims as well, and you sound well catching your breath. It is decided. You two will have to do. But we aren't sources, and you said it was only with the help of another source that the sun and moon sources were able to seal Cain. Ah, uh, you <laughs> Please pay attention. The Earth Source is the only one who can seal the cane once he has been in prison. But this poses another problem. I... Okay, so it was Gnome, the other one. Shut up. Cain nearly killed her before the seal was complete. The only way to save her was to bind her to a human body. She was sent to Earth under the care of mortals, her memory erased until she was able to be strong enough to regain her source form. But sometime in the last year, we lost track of her. None of us knows what happened to Gemma. If she's still alive, or... Wait, wait, wait. Gemma? You and Alice fill Alma in on all you know about Gemma. Alma nods, expression thoughtful. This is at least good news. You must find her in order to imprison Cain once more. But the quest will surely be fraught. We will continue this discussion after I've made preparations. I will send you a notice of our first training session soon. Train them. You can't pit Ezekiel and Atlas against the air source. They're children. Oh, are we really? After everything we've been through, the children have refractionary energy coursing through them. Well, that and the fact we defeated Rafe. 
exchange a glance with Atlas, whose jaw is clenched, determination burning in his eyes, he nods at you. If this power is still inside of us, if it's the only thing that can stop Cain, we have to do something with it. I want to try to find Gemma and stop Cain. Alice and I can promise that much, at least. Dean Waithe was close with Elise and may have met Gemma at some point. It's a long shot, but it might be worth asking him about her. Uh, but I still don't like this. I'll only allow it if, it get, if I get keep a close eye on the training sessions to make sure you and Atlas are okay. I can agree to those terms. These children made this mess. It's up to them to rectify it. We have no other hope. He waves a hand to dismiss you. You bolt to your feet. Wait, I want to know more about my mom. You can't just tell us she's a source and then leave. I have so many questions. Is this why Kane was looking for us? When he showed up in Vin Square, he'd been looking for someone else. Did he think our mom was the one who freed him? I believe he did. I thought the same thing, and I was just about as stunned as he must have been. The two of them rarely saw eye to eye, and had very different feelings for humans. They tarnished any camaraderie they once had. Evelyn, did you know all this about her mom? Is this another thing you've kept from us, Dean Swan? I swear. I didn't. Thea was... Oh, look, I did type her name correctly, so it was Gnome. Thea was the one of um, my best friends. We went to school together. She was immensely gifted, but I had no idea. The woman you've come to think of as your friend and mother is a stranger. She was not even human, though she masqueraded as such. But why? Is she... If she had such immense power, what drew her to the mortal world? Why did she marry her dad? Why did she have children? You're about to piss her off because you're asking a stupid question. She's such a mystery. Not to mention alive. And she couldn't bother to come tell us of any of this herself? There is much I could tell you about your mother's time on Earth. Perhaps that would help you better understand her as well as your own powers. But are you certain this is information you can handle? Press Alma for more information about your son, source mother, to learn how to... So suddenly she goes from being very hesitant. You also learn more about the extent of your powers. She goes from being very hesitant. I kind of... I like your aura. And for... Kind of pretty to... Shut up! I need to know. What, I like a woman who doesn't, like, have her boobs out. Shut up. Very well. This determination will serve you well in the task ahead. Come. She turns towards the door, and you and Atlas follow. She leads you through the campus, up to the sun at practice room. The light from the crystal sparkles around the room. I have not felt Thea's presence so strongly in a long while, and yet it is only a glimmer in comparison to her true power. The crystal was her gift to humanity. You mean it actually used to belong to her? I wonder if that's why I feel so peaceful here. She sighs and turns to you, you. After Cain was sealed beneath the earth, Thea and Gnome took turns assuming their human forms and returning to make sure he was still sealed. But Thea became distracted, seeking out more of the human experience. One time, while in her human form, she fell in love with our dad. Did he know she was a source? I do not know for sure, but I cannot imagine Thea lying to someone she loved. But by the time she met your father, she was already enraptured with her new life and distracted herself from the sources. But why did she leave to begin with? Thea loved humanity much more than I believed a source should. She wanted to go to school, wanted to experience friendship. She began to... Her expression tightens and a hint of scorn enters her voice. She began to wish she was human. I wished I warned her of her foolishness, but she was lost in daydreams of another life, a simpler life. It can't help that she fell in love. But she had her duty. She flaked out being a source so she could be human. And then she flaked out on our being a mom. Eh, I don't think she flaked out. He turned towards Atlas, but he crosses his arms and looks away. Thea has actually always acted on her own whims. After meeting your father, she never returned to her sources. 
Alma, what do the other sources think when she stayed on Earth? Was she really that different from the rest of you? Hmm, go with that one. I thought her foolish and flighty. Gnome was able to empathize with her, but still didn't see much sense in her decision. Sova thought her departure an inevitable consequence and her time on Earth. Esma was furious at first, though her temper burned over. Let me guess, she's a fire person. She looks at your case unreadable, the strength of it is intimidating. Mostly, we missed her. I got a question. She had kids, but she isn't human. I know it sounds like a stretch to say me and Ezekiel are sources, but... But it might explain why Alice and I are so powerful. You were birthed from a mother's mortal form, so you will never be immortal, nor will you have a full source's powers. This day just went from lame to worse. However, some humans can access power much greater than what the average attuned is capable of, and thus the refractionary power. Think of the refractionary energy and look at Atlas, remembering how it ran through you and Rafe's lab. With the sun crystal lending you its energy, and maybe Alma's power as well, you feel a hint of it. You reach for the swirling magic buried deep, and... Power like this, you mean? Alma scrutinizes you, and for a second you think she looks confused. I wonder what it is you children want. Is it power, or something else? Alice shrugs moodily, so Alma turns her stare on you. I want... Peace. What's the point of power if you never get to be happy and, uncom and comfortable? I don't want my power to start ruling my life. I did not anticipate such wisdom from you. I can't help wondering about the future, though. If we'll see our mom again. How our powers will be keep developing. Do I have to remind you that your special ability is pre-science? Oh, yeah, I'll give it a try. You close your eyes, reaching for the glow of the crystal. As the assuming warmth washes through you, you feel your mind reaching out to the future. No, my sons. That looked like the uh, dome where we do the thief game. Your eyes snap open and you sway dizzily for a second. I I think I heard something. I, I think it was her. But I, I don't know what it meant. Half the time I, I don't even know what my prescience is trying to tell me. You need training. You both do. She sweeps her gaze over you and Atlas. I sense something immense in you children. Something not wholly human and not wholly source. But I've told you enough. Now you must turn your minds to the task at hand. I will send for you soon, and our first lesson will commence. She turns with a swirl of her cloak and leaves you and Atlas in the silence of the sun at room. Can I get your number before you get... Oh, no, okay, fine. I'm not fully human, huh? Until she gives us something more concrete than that, I'm uh, taking her words with a grain of salt. Oh, come on. You think this is totally cold, don't you? Being a quasi-source or whatever... Atlas rolls his eyes, but you see a hint of a smile when you elbow him. Two of you head out of the sun out room together. The afternoon of the first thief game of the season, you and your friends approach the arena. You keep your eyes out for Grey Warden Wave. Who? Swan said that he was coming to the game. We might as well ask what he knows about Gemma. I still can't wrap my head around the fact that this blood source is, is having you and Atlas be sun and moon source stand-ins. Not to mention the revelation about your mother. Humans birth perma source? I've, I've never heard of anything so fascinating. And now we know the connection between your mom and Cain. Mama Winchester totally kicked his butt. Did you just call a source Mama Winchester? Finding Gemma is more important. We've, uh, at least seen where she is, and she's the key to trapping Kane again. Ugh, oh, god damn it! stop with your branching, it's kind of eerie like you're an alien. Ezekiel, the branching tells me the Grey Garden Wraith is in line to enter the stadium. You should hurry. You and Atlas split off from your friends and run to the entrance. Dean Wraith. 
Ah, that is an Ezekiel. You must be looking forward to the game, and we have questions. A burning questions that uh, can't wait until uh, another second. But do you know a girl named Gemma? Elise, Joffy's foster daughter. Yes, I met her several years ago. Evelyn told me that she's gone missing. Why do you ask? You look at Atlas and he gives you a subtle nod, eyebrows raised. Uh, she might be the key to saving the whole world. Dean Waith sound nods sagely. Yes, children often are. Ah, uh, glad you agree with us. The truth is, Dean Joffe wanted us to find her. We were wondering if you could tell us anything that might lead to give us a lead. Well, she was a nice child, absolutely fascinated with my magic, though her own powers were immense and unnatural. You don't say. She threw quite a tantrum when Elise tried to put her to bed, shaking the house nearly off its foundation. Did Dean Joffe... have an explanation for her power? I didn't ask, but I sensed that there was much not being said. There were multiple foreign energies around Aunt Gemma. They were ancient and human and fracturing. The most recent seal felt nearly uh, two decades old. His eyes expression going far, far away. Such power in a child. Part of me wondered if she was destined to be the next high attuned. Another part wondered if she was even fully mortal. Suddenly focuses on you. Why is everyone obsessed with me? Focus on Atlas. He's he's moody. I hope, when then, that when you go looking for her, you don't do anything rash. Evelyn worries a great deal about the two of you. Shouldn't you uh, tell us not to look for her? Oh, my time as Dean is over. Besides, I sense an overwhelming resolve in the both of you. I know I can't stop you. Winchester, hurry up! You're gonna be late! Ah, I must bid you farewell. I haven't been into fighting Drexmar game in decades, so I'd like to get a good seat. He waves goodbye and you enter the arena while Alice rejoins your friends. Inside, Everett calls you into a huddle while the stadium fills up around you. Alright, I've got good news, team. Gilda Grave was good last year, but this year they're even better. One of their guys is called the Frost King now. You all glance around the field to where the Gilda Grave team is huddled around their star player. Oh. Ha! 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 We've kicked this guy's ass before, haven't we? We've been training for this match. Just remember what we've done in practice and we're golden. At least it'll be a fair match without Rafe around to possess him. The odds of me uh, drowning are significantly lower. But uh, uh, that's the water rat who freezes his opponents in their tracks. Rumor has it, not even fire rats can stop him. Why would you use fire against water? What are you, an idiot? Right, like I'm scared of someone who plays around with ice cubes. He doesn't stand a chance. I'm not worried. Langley's led us to victory two years in a row. Today will just be the same. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll do my best. Damn right you will, and so will the rest of you. We'll show them we don't need any fancy titles to kick butt out there. Now get to your warm-ups. Hang back to talk to Griffin as the rest of the team spreads out to stretch. So, uh, how are you feeling about the inevitable victory? Trying to not think about the fact that the whole team, scratch that, the whole school is depending on me to win this game. He looks across the field and his face falls again. But if not even the Fire Rats can stop the Frost King, what could my Earth magic possibly do? Fire, or, uh, excuse me, Earth versus Water, you've got this, bro. Griffin, your Earth magic can do a whole lot, and you and I will stick together. We've got a shot at this. Actually, you just gave me an idea. There's a companion spell called Chariot of Fire that surrounds a caster with a fire shield. It shoots unlimited fireballs at nearby opponents who tries to summon magic. It's defense and offense built into one. Sounds like the perfect way to turn this Frost King into a puddle of water. 
I was gonna say a mist, but yeah, why not? If the rumors about him are true, this might be the only way to beat him. Oh, you mother f Arr! You know what, I'm being nice today, guys. I'm being nice. You should uh, share this video and, uh, yeah, let people know that, uh, hi, I'm spinning diamonds. Awesome. It should be pretty quiet around the back of the stadium. If we hurry, we'll be able to get the spell down. Griffin leads you to a secluded spot along the lake side outside the stadium, which is kind of pretty. So, how does this chariot of fire spell work? I don't think I've done any fire companion magic yet. Alright. One person casts a basic flame spell, and the other takes the fire and surrounds us both with it. Alright, let's give it a shot. I'm a pro at the flame spell by now. Viola! A flame springs to life in your cupped hands, sparking and sputtering vigorously. Griffin claps his hands together and draws a semicircle in the air. Nor Rezazim. The fire in your palms flies in the air and surrounds the two of you with a flaming force field all the way around. Holy crap, it worked. I wonder what else a spell can do. Let's... Make a fire tornado. Probably the most terrifying thing you could uh, have coming your way, right? I like the way you think. We have to control the current we send out from our shield. Alright, like this? The flames surrounding you and Griffin turn into a corkscrew in the air before impacting the ground and forming a funnel of roaring fire. Good luck dealing with that, Frost King. Griffin releases the spell and turns to you with an excited grin. Not even the Frost King will be able to deal with this spell. Griffin, you've got nothing to worry about. Yeah, I'm feeling a lot better. But what if he manages to separate the two of us? So we can't cast Chariot of Fire. I don't know how my earth magic will stack up. You could... Cover yourself with stone? Eww, trap him in a maze. He can't freeze you if he can't see where you are. And if he's lost, you can sneak up on him. Ezekiel, that's genius. Thanks. It's my middle name. Griffin lets out a long sigh of relief. You might just have saved the entire game. Cap's counting on me to take this Frost King down, and if I can't... No offense, but we wouldn't automatically lose if you can't beat the Frost King. I'm saying that to... I'm not saying that to be mean, just we're a team. I know Cap expects you to carry us through this match, but you don't have to put it so much pressure on yourself. All of us are here to help. Griffin is silent for a moment as your words sink in. You're right. I don't even want the shoulder of all the responsibility alone, but I hate not meeting people's expectations. Why am I like this? Why do I put all unnecessary pressure on myself? Brah! Brah, I've been asking that my whole entire goddamn life. It's because you're selfless. I want to actually go with Born Leader, too, but... You always want to do the right by people, so you bend over backwards to make sure everyone's uh, lives are easier. But sometimes you push yourself too hard. I wouldn't uh, think to describe myself as selfless, but... When you put it like that, I do always try to put other people first. You have friends and people who care about you. Who want to help you out as much as you help them. You don't have to do everything alone. In that case, you're more than welcome to take care of the Frost King on my behalf. I will, goddammit, let's do this! I just might, and I won't let you lift a finger to help me. I think we got this uh, thief game in the bag, Ezekiel. And not because of the Chariot of the Fire. You practice the Chariot of Fire with Griffin. Because you always know just what to say to help me think straight. If the players will take position on the field, the thief game is about to begin. Yeah, why not? Let's let Carson have a moment to, you know, be the announcer here. <laughs> That's our cue. Can't start the match without our fearless leader, can we? Not without the his best teammate to back him up, you can't. You and Griffin hurry back inside to join your team on the field. Dome closes, and Gildegrave's players get into position in the starting area. The Frost King calls out loudly to his team. <laughs> These Drexamars look even weaker than the chumps we beat last week. Take it easy, guys. We won't even have to break a sweat. Oh, he is going down. Ah, pretty much. The referee blows his whistle, and the match begins. The arena shifts 
and the opposing team disappears from view. You and your teammates find yourselves ankle deep in water. Find cover. Go, 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 go! Your teammates scatter, running up to the beach and to the undergrowth. You and Griffin pick your way through lush jungle, but freeze when you spot people through the foliage. Ah! My Apex Legend skills will take over from here. Let's go! I hear them crashing around. You head that way. I'll take care of the ones over there. Got it! Crap. How did he find us so fast? Quick, let's get inside. You dart inside the ruins of the mansion and race up the stairs. There you are! Only to find yourselves buffeted back down by a gust of wind. Ah! You hit the ground and scramble back to your feet as your opponent sprints your way. So he's air. Cast a blinding light. Ha! Ah! You throw up your hands and sunlight fill floods the hall, turning your vision white. Ezekiel, where are you? Somebody collides with you and you both fall to the ground. Ouch. What? Oh, god damn it, man. Ezekiel's at you. Feel around for Griffin's hand, but pull him to his feet. The two of you stumble through the foyer as your vision slowly clears. You're in a shifts and you're splashing through a sewage tunnel. You barely take a step when the ground rumbles. Water spills out of the pipes, you flail, trying to keep your head above water. <laughs> ah! The flood washes Griffin away. Griffin, no! I got this! Zeph appears, calming the water, but Griffin is nowhere to be sight. A Gildegrave player voice echoes in the pipes. Oh, that was supposed to even the playing field. Don't worry, I'm in my element. The Frost King appears, kicking up a wave of water and freezing it into a tidal wave of ice that crashes towards you. Not so fast! Everett blasts the ice apart with a fireball, but chunks of the ceiling start crashing down, giving the Frost King a chance to slip away. Once I'm done with you, our king will have gotten all the rest of our players out. This is almost over. Half it's raining boulders. Defend. I'll take care of this cap. You'll your hands into face and the boulders crumble to sand that fall harmlessly over him. Quick reflexes, Winchester. Could you quit messing up my plans? I'm gonna mess up your face in five minutes. Sorry, no promises there. Zeph sends a water whip to tug the flag off her belt. As soon as he grabs it, she teleports back to the sideline. Winchester, Zeph, I'll take care of whoever's left this way. You gotta find Griffin before the Frost King gets to him. Got it, Cap. You dash off through the sewers, and before long, the arena shifts again. You end up outside a dilapidated building. The snow is piled high around, and your breath puffs out white into the freezing air. I love when the arena works to my advantage! The Frost King runs past, hitting a flurry of ice at Griffin, who's backed into a corner. Don't underestimate me. Practicing with Griffin helps him defend himself. A stone wall erupts out of the ground in a maze, guarding Griffin from the Frost King's side. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? I miss you so. We're a team and we're gonna kick your ass. You dive through a window and sprint to Griffin's side, a flame already building in your palms. Griffin, quick, the chariot of fire. I knew you'd show up. Fire swirls around you both, creating a protective shield that melts the snow at your feet. Not so fast! The Frost King rides a wave of snow towards you, cresting high over your heads. He surfs the wave, dodging the fireballs that shoot off the shield at him. He's fast, even our fireballs aren't getting him. That's why we use the tornado. He's no match for us. Let's melt all the snow. That way, he won't have anything to work with. You've got it. You and Griffin pump all your firepower into the flames. Your shield expands, the scorching heat dissolving the snow until all that's left is steam. No, oh, not my eyes. While the Frost King panics, Griffin darts out and snatches his flag. Game over, Frost King. The Frost King teleports back to the sidelines and the arena dissolves. You and Griffin won the game for your team. Mm. Mm. Just take it. Just take it. We're gonna make it. Uh, uh. Griffin, you did it. You won the game. We won.
Draxamars, Draxamars, Draxamars! As the crowd begins chanting, your team hoists you and Griffin in the air. You hear snippets of the cheers from the stands. That's Locum's logos right there. Y'all are loving friends with talented people. This was so much better than listening to Thief Games of the Trees. I can't wait for Ezekiel and Griffin to play again. The sun at happens to be my friend. Very talented, if I say so myself. Suck it, Gildegrave. My brother totally kicked your ass. What a rousing match. The thief teams in my day couldn't compare. Ever pumps his fist in the air, letting out a whoop while an award calls across the fields of the Frost King. Ha ha ha! Looks like you shouldn't have let your guard down, huh, Frosty? Don't you think this is over, Trixamars? There's always next time! Hey, when should you go get mind controlled by Rafe some more? Now that is how a Drexamar plays. Great job, Winchester Langley. After the stands have cleared out, you and your friends are last ahead across the bridge back to the campus. By the way, I didn't see our book open and learn the spell, so I'm assuming that's a team building exercise and we will probably never use it again or until the end of the book. I can't believe I was so worried. I should have trusted the team would pull through, like it always does. The Frost King didn't stand a chance against our Chariot of Fire. A thief as a whole might be Snorville, but Ezekiel, you were divine out there. The rough physicality blended with the artful magic. It gives you a flirty wing, brushing your fingers along the back of your hand. Zeph elbows you in the side and you fall back with him. God damn it, Zeph! Stop it! Like someone's your biggest fan, I'm gonna punch you. You ruined it. You ruined the moment. You ruined it. Just touching my hand. You fucking ruined it. Seth, step outside. I need a moment of your time so I can beat your ass. Soon you'll be signing autographs after games. Don't be ridiculous, Seth. You're the type to sign autographs, not me. What I'm trying to say is we might not have a party to celebrate your win, but you can still celebrate with someone special. Oh, f you. Here we go, diamonds. Hmm, I guess the rest of the afternoon is free. Sneak off to get some alone time with a special someone! We have Shreya or Aster. I'm gonna go fap. <laughs> okay. That was. Okay. That's. Alright. The game was a lot. On top of everything else that's been going on, I just want to relax on my own right now. You wave goodbye to Zeph and the rest of your friends and head to your room to change. You hang the Do Not Disturb sign on your doorknob and a few hours pass. Later that night, you and Atlas are hanging out in your common room. You're trying to teach him a simple sun spell. Like this? Ugh, why do they keep going out? The orbs of light that had been floating around Atlas's head shrink, but until they look like a few dim fireflies. I guess sun magic is still pretty hard for you. If you're really focused, you should still feel some faint threads of sunlight, and your attention is caught by a note flying out of the fireplace. It flutters down to the floor where it lies still. Whoa. Hey, speaking of which, where was Tim in that match? Tim gives you a cautious sniff and perks up. Whoa. I guess that means it's okay. You see Elma's name on the letter, and so you pick it up and read the short note. Looks like it's our first training session that's coming up. She says to be prepared. So I guess this really is happening. We're really training to take on Kane and actual source. Atlas releases a spell and the little pin pricks of light around his head dis disappear. I wonder how this old guy will stack up to Rave. He's got to be at least a hundred times stronger. Oh, just a hundred! Atlas, the world is counting on us. We defeated Rafe. We can handle Kane too. He'll be back underground before he knows him. And this time, we'll make sure he stays there. There is one more thing, though. Reach into your pocket and take out your mom's picture. You're seriously been carrying that around? I can't help it. She's been on my mind, and it's still so hard to believe that she's a sun or source. Like... I hope Alma tells us more about her. Tim feels the same way, don't you, bud? 
Atlas lets out a skull, crossing his arms. What's the point? Learning more about her won't help us deal with Kane. It might. Maybe she knew a special spell to use against him, or had some sort of son ability I could learn that, that, that'll be useful. But more than that, she's our mom. I want to know who she is. And everything Alma told us only brought up more questions. You're just letting yourself get distracted. There's a bigger picture here than some long-lost family story. Why are you so against knowing her? She's a stranger, Ezekiel. In 18 years, she hasn't checked in on us once. Don't tell me you care that much about her. I mean... I'm a little curious. It's not like everybody's mom is a source of sun magic. That's exactly my point. Our mom is a source. She had to know what was going on with us in the last year, but did she even try to help us? Alice, you're really hurt about this, aren't you? I'm not hurt. I'm angry that our super-powered mom couldn't care less about her two human children. You can't know that. If Gemma could be weakened as much as she was, that means the sources aren't invincible. There might be a good reason our mom hasn't come to see us. Alma's sure her mom's still alive, but didn't say anything about her being hurt or in danger or anything. She's just vanished. I can't believe you're defending her. This woman knows this source you don't even know. Fire in the fireplace flares, flames spitting and crackling. Tim shrinks away from Alice, looking at him with big, worried eyes. <sighs> I'm not defending her. I'm just trying to be reasonable. Alice throws his hands up. The table in the center of the room starts to rattle. You aren't being reasonable. 18 years, Ezekiel. We haven't heard a word from her in 18 years. He turns on his heels and storms for the door. Sparks of magic spiling around him, he turns around in the doorway. The sooner you realize we don't matter to her, the sooner you can stop caring about good-for-nothing mother! Slams the door behind him, your heart races as silence echoes around you. I feel him. I kind of channel a little bit of anger and rage myself as I feel him. I'm not going to go into it. One day you guys will know my story. Um, I'm not going to rant like I usually do. We're just going to move on. So, with that being said, I hope you all did enjoy the content. Please do. Um, much like uh, in the story. As you saw, Griffin said that, uh, you know, pretty much we, we need each other. And it's true. Without you guys, this channel is nothing, and I might as well quit doing what I'm doing. So, if you truly do enjoy the unique experience that I bring to you and to the YouTube, um, please feel free to like, share, comment, um, hit the bell for notifications so you'll receive notifications when videos go live. Come over to Twitch, watch me live stream. Um, you know, without again, without you guys, I'm I'm nothing. We, this is a community, and I am, you know, just one of the, the, the people here trying to, trying to, to, I don't know, be just the name of the channel, that's it. You know, trying to entertain, trying to bring happiness, trying to bring a lot of things to the table, um, and like I said, bring a unique experience where, um, you know, that's what makes my channel unique, you know? So, uh, without further ado, thanks for watching, and, uh... Hey, maybe I'll catch you guys in a live stream or the next video. Peace.